Hi guys, in today's video we're going to take a look at the role of the catalyst, reaction profile diagrams, types of catalyst, the importance of catalyst, an exam style question and finally a summary. So what is the role of a catalyst? Well, a catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of reaction, as we know, and it does so without being used up in the process. Catalysts usually work by reacting to form an intermediate and are then regenerated later in the reaction. So here we have a reaction profile diagram showing the activation energy with our catalyst and that without our catalyst. So let's take a look at what our reaction profile would look like when we have added our catalyst. A reaction profile shows the progress of the reaction and it's plotted against the energy as you can see here. On our x-axis we have the progress of our reaction and on our y we have our energy. We have our reactants and our products. Now we know that our catalysts provide an alternative route for the reaction, and this route requires a lower activation energy. If we take a look at this first reaction profile here, this represents our reaction without the presence of a catalyst. We can go ahead and label the activation energy. It can be represented by this arrow. Our blue arrow here represents the activation energy with no catalyst. If we move on, we can take a look at the reaction profile with the addition of our catalyst. Again, we have that blue line representing our reaction without the catalyst, and we can go ahead and relabel on the activation energy of that reaction. We can now go ahead and label on the activation energy of our reaction with our catalyst. This is represented by our red arrow. We can see that the reaction profile of our reaction with our catalyst has a much lower activation energy. As a result of this, more molecules can overcome the lower activation energy. There will be more successful collisions per unit of time, and so the rate of reaction will increase. So now we've had a look at how our catalysts are increasing the rate of reaction. Let's take a look at the different types of catalyst. Well, broadly speaking, there are two categories of catalyst. The first is a homogeneous catalyst, a catalyst in the same state as the reactants. So, for example, this could be a liquid catalyst with a liquid reactant. A good example that you will all be familiar with are the enzymes in your saliva. Enzymes in your saliva catalyse reactions that break down molecules of food that you consume. The second category of catalyst is our heterogeneous catalyst. These are a catalyst in a different phase to the reactants. So for example, we could have a gaseous reactant passed over a solid catalyst. An example of this that again you may be familiar with, whether you realise it or not, is the catalytic converter in the exhaust pipes of cars. These catalyse the reaction of harmful and dangerous gases such as carbon monoxide that can be produced through incomplete combustion to other gases such as carbon dioxide. So now I've had a look at different types of catalysts and how our catalysts work, let's quickly review the importance of catalysts in industry because catalysts are hugely important in the chemical industry. So as I mentioned, catalysts provide that alternative reaction pathway and they require a lower activation energy. Well, in requiring a lower activation energy, they lower the energy demand of the process, so the process requires less energy. This is incredibly beneficial for the chemical industry because it lowers the demand for fossil fuels. And it also lowers the greenhouse gas emissions that would have been generated in producing energy to power these reactions. So we can see how hugely important catalysts are in the chemical industry. They're incredibly useful and they exist in different types. An incomplete reaction profile for the reaction of benzene with chlorine is given below. And we can see we have our reagents and our products here. Part A. Draw the reaction pathway onto the diagram for firstly the reaction without a catalyst and secondly the reaction with an aluminium chloride catalyst present. So if we take a look at our diagram, firstly we're going to draw the reaction without a catalyst. So we know we're going to have this curve with our activation energy. Then we're going to draw the reaction with the catalyst. Well, we know the important feature here is that the activation energy is going to be lower. So it's going to look something like this. So let's go ahead and label those so it's clear. Nice and simple way for us to gain those first two marks. One mark for showing the pathway without the catalyst and a second for showing a pathway with a low activation energy with our catalyst. Moving on to part B explain how the catalyst impacts the rate of reaction. 
Well, we know that catalysts are really useful because they provide an alternative reaction pathway, which requires a lower activation energy. As more molecules have an energy in excess of this new lower activation energy, more successful reactions occur and the rate of reaction increases. I've explained that the catalyst provides an alternative reaction pathway with a lower activation energy, getting us our first mark. I then go on to explain that more molecules have an energy in excess of this new lower activation energy, getting us our second mark, and just concluded by explaining that as a result the rate of reaction increases. So let's move on to question two. A pharmaceutical company is synthesising aspirin by mixing salicylic acid and acetic acid, both aqueous. The uncatalyzed reaction is very slow. Give two ways, other than adding a catalyst, in which they could increase the rate of reaction. Well, although you might not be familiar with our reagent, salicylic acid, and our product, aspirin, that's not a problem. This question is more of a generic question, asking us how to increase the rate of reaction of two aqueous reagents. Now, as we're working with aqueous reagents, we know that increasing the pressure, which would increase the rate of reaction with gaseous reagents, is not possible. However, there are other ways which we can manipulate the rate of reaction. This includes altering the concentration of our reactants and alternatively altering the temperature of the reaction. Manipulating conditions like these could allow us to increase the rate of reaction and one mark is awarded for both of these suggestions. Moving on to part B, we're asked to state an environmental and economic benefit of using a catalyst over the methods we've given. So let's first of all focus on our environmental benefit. If we were going to increase the temperature of our reaction, to increase the rate of reaction, we'd need to use fossil fuels to do this. And we know that fossil fuels produce CO2, a well-known pollutant. Now to look at the economic aspect of this. Well, not only would increasing the temperature require the use of fossil fuels which produce pollutants and greenhouse gases, but that's also an expensive process. Using a catalyst would be much cheaper than paying for the huge amount of energy needed to increase the temperature of these industrial reactions. I've explained that increasing the temperature requires the use of fossil fuels and this process produces carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, and we know our catalyst wouldn't do this, getting us our first mark for explaining an environmental benefit of using our catalyst. A catalyst would be cheaper than the large amount of energy required to increase the temperature of the reaction, explaining an economic benefit of using our catalyst and getting us the second and final mark in this question. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap provide smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.